The ability to migrate between tourist habitats is essential to both the Rotterdam and Amsterdam tourists. For the tourists of Rotterdam, traveling is simple and timely. Tourists can easily and patiently entertain themselves until the tram comes to take them to their final destination. When the tourist migration season is high, tourists can be found flocking to the watering hole filled with shops. The station offers everything from new clothes to the infamous capsulon. This is Liestelsluis Bridge, one of the dozens of Amsterdam's teasers that turn sightseeing into a quest for thousands of newcomers day after day. If you choose Canal as a meeting point, do not be surprised when icicles appear on your nose while waiting. Your date must have probably showed up at one of the other hundred canals, or simply does not like you. The canals of Amsterdam serve as an inspiration for hopeless romantics, as well as for treasure seekers. As a business card for the city of Rotterdam, the Erasmus Bridge brings forth progressive architecture connoisseurs from many different corners of the world. Rotterdam's main priority is its independence, and it is because of this that it never poses for selfies with strangers. However, this massive offspring of modern architecture is known for its hospitality and will host you for longer than you'd expect. Of the many cultural habitats of the Amsterdam tourists, the red light district is perhaps the most popular. In order to get ready for their breeding rituals, the Amsterdam tourists will walk to the window, hand over colorful paper called money, and wait for the show to begin. Not all Amsterdam tourists, however, have the pleasure of taking part in the breeding rituals. Most of them perch on the side of the road, awkwardly watching. Look, here's one now. Otherwise known as the Food Valhalla of Rotterdam, the Markt Hall is an architectural masterpiece and the first indoor market in Holland. From fresh fish to poultry, from cappuccino to cheese, from Srinam to Zandam, with all of these amenities, the Markt Hall lures in its prey, the Rotterdam tourist. While the Rotterdam tourist feasts, she must try not to be trampled by the gigantic snails, ladybugs, and other creatures that rain down in the Markt Hall. The Amsterdam tourist loves herself some refined cultural heritage. In the greenhouse coffee shop, we can see this flock of tourists calming their nerves for just 15 euros a gram. The Amsterdam tourist settles down to get her well-deserved rest. Following in the footsteps of her posy leaders, the Amsterdam tourist enjoys herself one of the many kinds of ganja, a traditional local delicacy. The Rotterdam tourist, however, prefers yellow houses to greenhouses. A great example of the refined architecture Rotterdam has to offer, the cube houses serve as an excellent habitat for the Rotterdam tourist. Here she is able to eat, rest, socialize, and entertain herself. Don't you just love the sophisticated creature? For the tourists of Amsterdam, migration is not as simplistic of a task as one may hope. Amsterdam Central is undoubtedly beautiful from the outside, but the intricacies of the public transportation system can be too complex for the average tourist to understand. The unclear directions make it very difficult for our tourists to know which form of public transportation to take, if any. A typical migration pattern that has been noticed is the tourists giving up on the transportation system and taking the city by foot. When the migration season is high in Amsterdam, tourists can stock up on their necessary goods in small quantities at the Hema in the station. They can try to find other stores, but as Amsterdam Central is a very complex place, most Amsterdam tourists accidentally find their way outside rather than the Albert Heijn they were looking for. Inevitably, the Amsterdam tourist realizes that Rotterdam is perhaps where she'd rather be. Unfortunately for her, the boarded up hallways of the train station make it particularly difficult to find the correct platform in time.